In this video, we're going to talk about freefall problems where something is thrown up um, or even thrown down. When something is thrown up, we would say that the initial velocity is positive, and when something is thrown down, we would say the initial velocity is negative. Regardless of if an object is thrown up or down or dropped, it will have the same acceleration. This is also true if one object is heavier than another. Regardless of how heavy the object is, all objects travel with the same acceleration due to gravity. Near the surface of the Earth, and if we ignore air resistance, that acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. We like to say that this number is kind of special, uh, and we use the letter lowercase g to represent it. Now, this is an acceleration, so for our motion equations, we can replace any of our regular motion equations with accelerations in them uh, with a negative g for the acceleration so that we get sort of a free fall motion equation. And of course, we can also replace x's with y's because y is much better for vertical motion. So these are three equations that we can use for free fall motion um, with negative g put in for a and y put in for x. Let's do an example problem. You throw a ball up in the air with a velocity of 4.9 meters per second. What is the maximum height the ball reaches? How long is the ball in the air before returning to your hand? And how fast is the ball going when it hits your hand? Well, let's start with the first part. Here you are. You're having a great time. You throw a ball up in the air. Hooray. You give that ball an initial velocity of positive 4.9 meters per second. And of course, you have a head. Um, if you want to find the maximum height that that ball reaches, that's like saying, okay, at some point, the ball is going to be at its highest point. And if I know that, we'll call this position here, we'll call that y naught. Let's say I threw it at zero, and I want to figure out what is y, the maximum height above your head that this ball reaches. Okay, um, there's something special about an object being thrown up in the air at its maximum height. At the maximum height, an object's velocity is zero, just for an instant of time. Because it's slowing down on the way up as gravity pulls it down, eventually it stops, and then will change direction and start to fall down towards the ground. So I can take advantage of the fact that the velocity is zero at the maximum height to answer part A. Now, for all of these problems, I have to remember that g is 9.8 meters per second squared, and I'm going to put that into my motion equations that I've rewritten. So, for part A, I am looking for that maximum height. I look at my equations, and I think, what has v naught, v, y, y naught, and g? Or, again, um, remember that delta y is always y minus y naught, so if I have a delta y, I can use that equation too. So go to my equation, and I think which of these three has v, v naught, g, and y and y naught, or, or delta y. Now, notice that I wasn't given time in any of my information, so the ain't got no time equation might be our best bet. Okay, if I write out the ain't got no time equation, v squared equals negative 2g delta y plus v naught squared. And I um, start rearranging it. I plug in anything that's 0. So first of all, the initial velocity is 0. So that would go away. Then this delta y, um, this would really be written y minus y naught, because that's what delta y is. And if I write it like that, then I can think, oh, well, y naught is 0, so this would be negative 2gy plus v naught squared. So I plugged in things that are 0, um, and now I'm going to rearrange this to try and solve for y, the variable that I want to find. So to find that y, the height above the position that you threw, I'm first going to add 2gy to both sides. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and g. The twos cancel and the g's cancel. So to find the height, I take the initial velocity squared and I divide it by two times g. So 4.9 
meters per second, the whole thing squared, over 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's going to give me um, 24.01, we'll say. 24, I'll just say 24 meters per second squared, meters squared per second squared, um, over 19.6 meters per second squared. The second squared is canceled. This meter cancels a meter squared. Um, and that's going to give me 1.225 meters. So 1.225 meters is the maximum height that the ball reaches. All right, now if I want to think about how long the ball is in the air before returning to your hand, I can do a couple of things. I could figure out how much time it takes the ball to reach its maximum height. Then figure out how much time it takes the ball to fall back to that exact same or I can be clever. So for part B, let's be clever. If I throw the ball up at an initial height that I call zero, so I'd say y not equals zero, and it returns to that exact same height, then I would say that y is zero at the end. My final position is zero. Then if I use my equation y equals one half, sorry, negative, one half g t squared plus v and y naught t plus y naught. If I use this equation, I can get rid of y and y naught. So zero equals negative one half g t squared plus v naught t. And now I can start to solve for time. Now, now what makes this easy? Um, I don't need to use like a quadratic equation or anything because I can divide all sides by t. If I divide the left by t, zero divided by anything is just zero. Um, but if I divide the right by t, then I'm gonna get uh, negative one half, so first zero on the left, right side that. Let's write that, then negative one half g t plus v naught is what I have on the right. Okay, so I didn't have to use a quadratic formula or anything like that, I just got rid of a t. Um, and now I can solve for time by adding both sides, one half gt, so if I add that to both sides. Okay, then I'm going to multiply both sides by two to get rid of this one half, and then divide both sides by g. So when I do that, I get an equation for time. Two times the initial velocity 4.9 meters per second divided by 9.8 meters per second squared, which is going to give me 9.8 meters per second over 9.8 meters per second squared. So the meters cancel, one of the seconds cancel. Um, 9.8 over 9.8 is 1. And my unit is 1 over 1 over seconds, which is the same thing as just saying seconds. So it takes one second uh, for the ball to go from a height of 0 back to that same height. Now, if I was to ask you how long it took the ball to reach its maximum height, hopefully you could see that if I throw the ball here at t equals 0, um, and then when it reaches that same height, it's at t equals 1 second, then in the middle, it would reach this maximum height at 0.5 because it will take gravity the same amount of time to slow the object down to a stop that it does to speed it back uh, up on the way down. Okay, so now let's take a look at how fast the ball is going when it hits your hand. Let's clear some room and then we'll write C. Okay, so how fast is the ball going when it hits your hand? Well, if it takes one second to go all the way up and then come all the way back down, maybe that's the best way for me to go about this. I know the initial velocity is 4.9. I know the time to go up and come back down. Again, that's when the ball will hit your hand. It's one second. I know that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. And I want to find the velocity. This velocity, if I were to draw it, um, we've kind of drawn this pathway arced a little bit, but let's just imagine that it's going straight up 
and straight down. It's just kind of hard to draw that. But what we're trying to do is figure out what is the velocity of the ball here when it comes back down. Well, I take a look at my uh, free fall motion equations and I think what has V naught, T, G, and V in it? And the equation that has those things in it is V equals negative GT plus V naught. So I want to solve the final velocity and it's already on the left so I don't need to get rid uh, or rearrange anything in the equation, get rid of or rearrange anything. So I plug in negative 9.8 meters per second squared times one second plus four, and I'll put this in parentheses, 4.9 meters per second. So that's going to be the seconds cancel, one of the seconds squared, so negative 9.8 meters per second. Negative 9.8 plus 4.9 meters per second, which is going to give you negative 4.9 meters per second. That's interesting. So my velocity at the height that it returns to is negative 4.9 meters per second, which is the same as the velocity that you threw the ball up with. It's just that now on the way back down, it is going that exact same speed, but down. This is true um, of, of all free fall motion problems. The vertical velocity upward is equal to the vertical velocity downward at the same height. Uh, so you can always use that fact to your advantage when you're solving free fall motion problems. Well, congratulations, you did it, this video is done.